Well, hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. And I started early this morning, I was up at half five and left home about half six. And I've just arrived here just after seven to this magical spot, as you can see there. Beautiful area of grassland, I can actually see a deer right in the far distance over there. It's white bum sticks out like you wouldn't believe. Um, well, I said to one of the subscribers, Craig, I was gonna find some deer for him. So let's hope today um, we pick out some deer, but this is a great spot obviously in here for hunting birds of prey, for deer as well. Um, yeah, I'm the only person here in this uh, reserve. Nobody else here yet. And uh, I'm just gonna enjoy a full day here See if we can find some great wildlife. There's lots of birds of prey species here. Lots of mammal species. In fact, I could just see a heron just flying by, if you don't know if you can see. There we go, look at that. Great blue heron, so nice to get her early. Just gonna go and have a walk around, see if we can see anything. And um, yeah, get set up in a location and hope for the best. So I've currently got some uh, white-tailed deer just in front of me. It's all right. Beautiful. Unbelievable. Literally right there. Wow. It's all right. Well, that's the closest I've ever been to wild deer before. Hello, you beautiful thing. Hello. Well guys, that's uh, this is no deer park. This is no sort of an area where these are captive bred. This is what a wild deer, obviously and on a reserve, but you see quite people maybe moving along this path here, but incredible, aren't you? Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Do you know I've got a zoom lens on here and I can't even get a picture of you. I can smell you from here. Wow, that's incredible. What a close proximity to that deer, amazing. So guys, I've uh, already encountered some white-tailed deer lots of waterfowl as you can hear that's where i am at the moment I'm going to set up somewhere in the corner out the way and hope for maybe an early raptor coming through it's just beautiful being here it's absolutely gorgeous a little chilly today but this grass is absolutely superb for an owl or uh, a harrier so i'm going to put myself into a position where i'm a bit more concealed and uh, just sit and wait really and just enjoy this early morning with nobody about and uh, yeah god it's lovely i think it's going to be quite a nice day so uh, i'm going to find a little inconspicuous corner get set up hope for the best So guys, I found a, a nice position here, as you can see. So I've got the light out to the left. Got a nice area here for the birds to hunt in. I'm quite high, so I can see along the grass at kind of eye level. I've adjusted the tripod, so my eye is right close to the viewfinder. It's not too high up, not too low down. So I'm stooping down from my back, just creating it a lovely long line across the top of the, of top of the uh, dead grass there. So if a harrier or anything does come along to hunt, Bear in mind it is a bit of a stab in the dark, but it's just quite a large area. It's perfect for hunting for any sort of owl species. 
diurnal species, um, crepuscular species, things like that. Obviously, early morning, evening, etc. You know, you can get um, an owl coming in, possibly a shorty that's just started arriving at the moment. Uh, saw wet owls as well, they've arrived. Long-eared owls have arrived, but won't be out hunting at this sort of time. But maybe a shorty, maybe a harrier, maybe a kestrel, who knows. But we'll stay here for at least kind of an hour and just wait and see what unfolds really. It's one of the best things is just sit, be patient, take it all in, happy days. It's what it's, what it's all about in wildlife photography. It's not necessarily chasing after species. Get yourself in a position where you think the species would like to hunt um, and then just sit, wait, and if nothing comes in an hour, maybe move on to another meadow. Um, you know, you just, you just gotta try it. And then if you get lucky, it's awesome. Um, the rewards pay off and uh, yeah, anyway, back to it. What's actually lovely looking through the viewfinder there at the moment is that that grass is gone over, it's all white and dead and it actually gives a really nice effect for a picture. And because there's no distracting elements on the grass from behind the depth of field, so the trees in the background, it's gonna be lovely, nicely diffused, and hopefully just get the shot of the bird coming across. Now, there's no guarantees I could spend the whole day here and literally see nothing of bird of prey light coming through, but I could see everything, you know. There's a couple meadows like this in this, in this um, reserve, which I probably will go and visit throughout the day, but I'm here for another probably a good seven, eight hours so I'm really hoping to get lucky. Um, but at the minute, just happy being here, just taking it all in. So the sunlight's just come up and it's just cast a wonderful glow across this grass at the moment. Absolutely fantastic. All we need now is a subject to photograph. Um, this is what we wanted, a nice bit of light coming across. Um, you know, not too harsh at the moment because it's still quite early. It's just past eight o'clock. Um, but a hunting raptor now would be awesome. Um, like I said, guys, um, I don't do bait photography. So the rewards do come quite rarely. <laughs> but it's much more fun that way. And I say about a lot about ethics and about doing stuff um, this way rather than the other where I sit in a hide and take a picture of a bird on a post with a dead pigeon. It's just, for me, there's just no challenge to it at all. You know, you walk from a car park to 500 yards to a hide and yeah, this is what it's all about. Getting out in nature, chance in your arm to see if you can see or capture anything that's quite unique. You know, you're gonna get a bird coming across here hunting in a certain place. You aren't gonna get that again here. You're not gonna get a bird in that same position. If you go to a hide, you're going to get a bird on the same post or a choice of five or six posts, you know. That's just like so boring and everybody's taken those before. It just looks terrible. But here, there's a chance you're going to capture that unique moment. And for me, that, that excitement drives me. I just want to share that with you because that's the reason why I do it. It's because it's unique, it's different and it's not the same as what everybody else has got. It's gotta be unique if you wanna get anywhere. You know, it it's really is getting yourself out in the field, spending hours, days, weeks in there without results, and you finally get the result. And that's where all that hard work pays off. Um, but I always say, and I mean it, it's each to their own. You know, people do the way they wanna do it. It's just not my thing. And to be honest, if you wanna go and entering any photographic competitions worldwide, I guarantee you, you won't be able to enter a picture of a sparrowhawk, a goshawk, a buzzard, whatever, on a post at a fed hide. It just isn't allowed because it's not unique. And in the eyes of the judging, it's cheating and there's no challenge. So just bear that in mind. You know, that's one thing you can't do when you go to these sort of places. But if you're not bothered about that and you just want to stick it on social media and get tons of likes, yeah, crack on. Um, uh, but yeah, this is for me here in this sort of place. So you guys, just a couple like tips really about, you know, positioning yourself here. So at the moment, I've got myself just there. So behind there, I've got the trees just to cover me a little bit, got the tall vegetation behind. And from a distance, I'm gonna blend in fairly well to the background without getting in neat camouflage. Um, you know, I'm quite 
concealed with what colours I've got on. So I'm set back, got the sun to this side, so it's casting light all the way across, so I've got a bit of side lighting coming in. And really, if you look around, there are a few trees just in the distance there. So when they hunt, they can land on those trees. Um, and it's just an ideal area in here, really. This stuff is dead, it's very thatchy, it's gonna have lots of voles in there. This is the sort of place that a bird of prey would come to hunt. So, you know, the chances are, you just wanna be looking out for where you position yourself. So you want the light from the side or behind you, not in front of you. So you're shooting straight in the light, creates that silhouette. Obviously not a very good idea. Um, so you want it positioned like that. Um, and just literally, I mean, I know that there's been a bit of um, activity on social media. So this sort of place is renowned for that harrier and it's renowned for owls as well. Um, and just plant yourself here and then just literally hope for the best. But you can do what you can do. Behind me here, there's a nice lot of um, very low lying shrubby trees there, hawthorny types. They've all been stripped, a really good position now. So I can swing myself around, get some pictures of some birds in here. Um, so I've given myself a few options you know, bide your time, stay here for an hour or so, and then move on, find somewhere else. Um, or just stay here for the entire day. There's no real need for me to use a hide here because it's a path here all the way along. So as long as I'm staying on the path and I'm not traipsing off deep into that long stuff, then, you know, wildlife will probably just accept you at that distance. Um, and if a bird of prey does come in and it say it's hunting over the back, the tendency would then be to people to think, oh, right, I'll grab my gear and I'll go and chase off around that side and see if I can get the bird. Likely it is, when you move around that side, the bird's gonna come over this side. The best thing is to sit, stay still, wait where you are, and that bird will probably hunt in this entire area. And it'll probably come right past you without you running after it. Um, there's a chance it won't. There's a chance it could hunt in that small pocket and then leave, but that's the chance you take. If you go and hound the bird and try to chase after it, it ain't gonna help. Um, so yeah, let wildlife come to you a little bit. That's just a couple of little tips there um, that you can adopt when you're out in places like this. Um, a lot of it is also constantly scanning around. I'm always looking, I'm not looking straight at the camera all the time. I'm always looking pretty much 180 degrees constantly, if not more, scanning around all day long. It's knackering, but it works. And I can see things at quite a distance. So I can see a crow just gone over. I just saw a jay go over them when we've been talking. You know, it's just being aware of your surroundings and give you in the best possible position then to hopefully get those shots and not get them missed. Oh, I've just come around the reserve now and I've just come, stumbled across these berry trees and they're absolutely jam-packed with juicy berries. Look at that. Amazing. God, that's a waxwing thrush delight on there. Amazing berries. So guys, just headed down to this little lagoon in here, quite large. It's loads of buffle heads, mallards, coots, and Canada geese, obviously. They're quite skittish though, so they're quite far away. Um, but it's certainly nice to come down and have a look, you know, see what's about. Just come along the shoreline of Lake Ontario there. And, um, but these are all far too far away really um, for anything decent. So. Just going to spend a quick 10 minutes here and then I'm going to head back up to the meadows and through the forest and then have a look 
see if we can find some woodpeckers, maybe some sleeping owls. Um, but I uh, think I have a quick brew here, take it all in, and then head back along the shore. So guys, covered quite a bit of ground today and uh, just had a bit of lunch. I've just stopped off at this little patch here. I've had red cardinals. Uh, I think it's a red-bellied woodpecker, um, cedar waxwings, American robins, um, I think it's American tree sparrow, all in just this little bit here feeding off the berries and they've just literally now left. Um, we've had a white-breasted nuthatching on the floor. Um, amazing if you just find these little pockets of just busyness of birds. Um, gone real quiet now though, literally just moved off. Um, but shared a bit, wonderful a bit of time with them in here. Um, sadly though, a lot of the, the shots in the video were quite difficult because they were kind of in a lot of branch cover there, but still nice to see. And hopefully I pulled a couple of images off, but really, really nice to see those wax wings again um, as they're moving around in their big flocks. And I'm just gonna head up to the top end now where I saw a massive berry bush earlier on. And I'm hoping maybe we get a load of um, wax wings on there. We can get in nice and close and and um, get some great shots of those guys feeding. So guys, covered a bit of ground today here, and um, I've had a, a good old wander around, seen lots of smaller bird species, and I've only seen one bird of prey so far, uh, and that was the Cooper's Hawk at distance. Um, and now I'm at this new new area here, this new meadow. See there, main track going down. This is a great expanse in here. So hopefully, a nice viewpoint here, so we've kind of, going down into a bowl here so lights behind me hopefully get some sort of bird of prey coming up through maybe just spoke to some local ladies there 
that um, particularly like the harrier here, the resident female, and say that she covers a, a vast area. Um, so there's no guarantees that it's gonna be here. So, um, but I'm just hoping as that light level drops, maybe the evening comes, we might get a bit lucky. Um, but I'm gonna sit up here for at least half hour and just chill out, see what happens. Got a couple of chickadees behind me here and got a load of berry bushes as well. So might get a flock of birds coming in. So just sit, wait and um, see what happens. So guys, it's um, now about three o'clock and I've just parked myself up here, which I've been told this is a really, really good spot for deer and the harrier. This is one of its main stomping grounds, the resident bird. Um, it flits between here and a couple other meadows. It's pretty good here actually, it's not as thick. So there's fairly short grass with some longer stuff, which would probably make more sense as well for the birds as well as they're quartering over. It's quite a large size. Plus we've got a woodland going around the edge of it, which is great for the owl species that are roosting up, come straight out to hunt on here. So chances of seeing anything is kind of 50-50, but gonna give it a go, see what happens, and hopefully we'll get lucky with that harrier um, or maybe an owl species, maybe a coyote, maybe um, one of the white-tailed deer coming out. Um, there's always a good chance. Sun's behind the clouds at the moment, but as it comes out, it casts a lovely glow. So the sun's going to go around, it's going to set that side, cast a nice glow across this lovely grassed area. Um, yeah, I hope we get lucky. We'll probably move up and down here a little bit, uh, see what happens. But uh, fingers crossed, we'll get some luck and get to see something, I hope. It's been good today, you know, it's not as productive as the last time I was here, um, but you do get that. One of my locations I go to, a friend messaged me today and said the long ears have been out flying because the red-tailed hawks have been flushing them from their roost. So missed out on that, but you know, it's a very busy place where those owls are. As you've seen in my previous videos, this is very much more quieter, uh, lack of people. And I, I kind of enjoy that a lot more than being in a concentration of photographers. But uh, anyway, enough rabbiting, keep my uh, eyes open and uh, my ears alert for hopefully anything that uh, comes out to hunt. Well, we've just had the Harrier in um, very, very far away, um, hunting right over the tree line. I'm really hoping it's gonna come in here. This light is absolutely fantastic now. The Harrier is right over that side where the trees are. Um, I've just done an extremely long bit of video there. Um, sorry about the sun. Extremely long bit of video, um, a long distance. And I'm really hoping it's gonna come and hunt in here. Um, no guarantees, but I saw the white rump on the back end. So it's definitely the Harrier. Uh, and now it's gone way, way, way off the back. So, oh, I really hope it comes in. I really, really do. It's such a perfect evening for it. Yeah, let's hope it comes back. Well, the Harrier is way, way, way off. Um, I've got some seriously distant video of it. It's hunting right over the other side. It's just literally just gone down um, on some prey. Uh, magical to see it though. A guy just went past and said, what are you after, a hawk? 
I was like, no, it's the Harrier. He said, I hope you find something better. I'm like, I'm quite happy with the Harrier, to be fair. But uh, fantastic. Um, gone down on something. It's been down quite a while, so possibly killed something. I'm really hoping it's going to come closer. That light now is perfect. This wind has picked up quite strong now, so trying to video side onto the wind uh, is quite difficult at distance. But um, yeah, doing the best I can. <laughs> um, but I'm really hoping it's going to get over this side, and this is perfect at the moment, just over here. This would be amazing if it came in here. At the moment, it's literally right over that side there, which is a long way off. But the R3 is managing to pick up um, the bird at distance um, and track it with the video and a couple of stills. But, you know, that's doing pretty well. Hey, fingers crossed it comes over. I'm just chuffed to have seen it. You know, I've been here today for, so with five, so six, seven, eight, nine hours today nine hours here and it's the first time I've seen it um, but yeah fantastic So guys, uh, it's getting pretty dark now. Uh, it's been a long day, about nine hours. So uh, yeah, done a, a full day out in the field. Um, the light's all but going, clouds are coming over. Oh, oh my God, just had the Harrier hunting just along this roadside here. And I managed to catch a picture very quickly of it going through the trees, but it went down in the thick stuff and now I've kind of lost it. Um, but I'm pretty much losing the light now, guys. So, uh, but it's been fantastic, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it's great to see that Harrier at the end. No great shots today, but hey, that's the way it goes. I thoroughly enjoyed it, nine hours out. Uh, it's starting to get a bit cold now, so I'm uh, gonna head back to the car. But uh, as always, guys, thanks very much indeed for your support on the channel. If you can give us a like and a comment, much appreciated. And if you don't subscribe to the channel and you fancy giving it a go, please click that subscribe button and click that bell to be notified of any new videos coming out. But until next week, guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. So guys, we've currently got some white-tailed deer, two stags and one female. As you can see on the camera there, just moving away, taking the female down. This looks like there's a rival male on the left that's now moving in. Um, yeah, amazing, just as about to pack up. Awesome. Anyway, got to get some footage before the light goes. Well guys, that was absolutely fantastic at the end there, just to see those 
deer, unbelievable. About four stags came out and about three hinds. A bit of posturing, bit of sniffing, bit of chasing, bit of chivy in the morn. Brilliant to see, absolutely fantastic. My first actual sight of any white-tailed deer stags, which was fantastic. So now back to the car, lights nearly gone. Saw the Harrier again, amazing. So this is definitely it for me for this evening. Um, guys, thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>